Like most superheroes, Batman has quite a lot of enemies, and he has faced gods and monsters in battle and won. But most of these fights are one-offs, or at least very rare confrontations. Some of them he really only faces when he's with the Justice League. Very few of them does he face on his own on a regular basis. But even still, his regular rogues gallery has some pretty powerful players in it. And this video is going to go through Batman's rogues gallery and discuss which of them is the most powerful, in terms of resources, brute strength, and raw power. Now in terms of resources, meaning manpower and money, the most powerful is definitely Ra's al Ghul, who has an army of the deadliest assassins on the planet and practically unlimited resources. Being alive for over 600 years does give a person a lot of time to accumulate wealth and influence, especially when you have pretty loose morals and are fine with murdering and stealing. And the League of Assassins gives Ra's al Ghul more power than some countries have, and it gives him a global reach. And the only regular Batman enemy who comes close to this type of organization is Bane, as he has his own gang of villains and even supervillains from Batman's rogues gallery, all organized and under his command. But still, this is nothing compared to Ra's al Ghul. After all, as I've said, he's had 600 years to get the League of Assassins organized. And of course, their loyalty is to the point where they'll kill themselves rather than betray Ra's. And a lot of them do. So Ra's is clearly the Batman villain with the most resources. But in terms of brute strength, on his own, he isn't really much. Yes, Ra's is insanely skilled and has even defeated Batman in one-on-one -on -one fights in the past because of his skill level. But he has no superhuman levels of strength. So when it comes to raw strength, the main contenders are of course Bane, Killer Croc or Clayface, depending on the continuity as sometimes Bane can be as strong as Superman, or other times he just has basic superhuman strength and is just a little bit stronger than the average human. And the other problem with Bane, of course, is that without the Venom, he is pretty weak, and his strength depends entirely on how much Venom he has inside him. And Killer Croc's strength varies quite a lot as well. In the Arkham games, he is a giant crocodile monster, whereas in other versions, he is just a man with a deformity. Stronger than most normal humans, yes, but not as powerful as the Arkham version. And because their strength does vary like this, depending on continuity, I've chosen to use the Arkham Games versions of these characters as a base, as they are very well known and very powerful versions of these characters. Not necessarily the most powerful version we've ever seen of them, but they are still up there in terms of power levels. Now, Bane is extremely strong and does deserve to be mentioned. But unfortunately, I've had to discount him, as his strength depends entirely on his venom. And without it, his strength is just that of a normal man in good shape. And at the end of the day, any one of Batman's villains is just as strong if they have access to the venom. As the Joker has shown on several occasions, when he's gotten his hands on some venom. So like I say, I can't count him. Especially since Bane has actually given up venom in the past. And while he is undoubtedly a great fighter, on or off of the venom, in fact, he has actually beaten Batman in one-on-one -on -one combat when he has no venom in his system. But still, he doesn't have superhuman strength without it, so he's just not a contender. Now, Killer Croc, on the other hand, is crazy strong. And as the Arkham series went on, he only got stronger still, with his mutation becoming more and more aggressive, making him bigger, stronger, and more like a crocodile, even complete with his own tail and he gained a healing factor, meaning that he's able to have more endurance and push himself harder than he could before. So this easily places him atop the other Batman villains as strongest, at least in terms of physical ability. Or at least it would, if not for Clayface. Now, Clayface is a shapeshifter who is essentially immortal. I mean, technically he can be killed, but he is functionally immortal. And of course, being a shapeshifter means that he can turn into anyone especially since his body in Arkham is roughly 15 feet tall, so he can even turn into giants. But the point being that he can turn into any Batman villain and duplicate their strength. So he can definitely match Killer Croc in terms of strength, and Clayface can also survive a hell of a lot more damage than Croc can. And again, being a shapeshifter, he can transform his body into all sorts of weapons, and he can inflict some serious punishment. In fact, my personal favourite time that he has utilised this in a fight is in the Batman the Animated Series. So Clayface's ability to survive almost anything, his super strength and his being able to shape shift into almost anything, means that he is the physical powerhouse of Batman's rogues gallery. There is some strong competition, 
but his strength isn't dependent on machines or chemicals like some of the others are, and his powers allow him to push his body further than anyone else possibly could. After all, even Killer Croc is made of flesh and bone, and those bones can break, whereas if Clayface's bones break, it doesn't really matter because he can just put them back together, so he's able to push himself more. Not to mention the fact that in the Arkham games, Batman needed gadgets, explosives, and a sword to beat Clayface, whereas he beat the powered up Killer Croc just using hand-to-hand -hand combat. So that clearly shows that Clayface was harder to beat, and most likely, stronger. And finally, we have raw power. Who is the Bat villain with the most powerful abilities? And this is actually quite an easy one to answer, as it is of course, Poison Ivy. You see, Poison Ivy can take control of plants at the molecular level, which is an absolutely amazing power. She can create trees larger than skyscrapers just by thinking about it, and she can harden their bark to be stronger than steel. She can create plant monsters and control them as an extension of her body, and she can make this with only a single plant seed. She can even create sentient life forms, which are plant creatures that can take on virtually any shape. And one of them even seduced and married Bruce Wayne in the animated series. And even though this was in part due to plant pheromones, it's still very impressive that she was able to create a life form that was intelligent enough to seduce someone, especially someone like Bruce Wayne. But the point being that she can literally grow an army of sentient plant slaves who will do her bidding and are just as intelligent as humans which I think you'll agree is a pretty godlike ability. She can also enslave anyone with her kiss, including Superman, which she has done on several occasions. So not only has she got amazing powers over nature, but she also has mind control powers as well. And when she mind controls Swamp Thing, who is the guardian of the green, she literally controls every plant on the planet. And at one point in the comics, she actually took control of every living being on the planet, which is 7.5 billion people. Now, I do have to say that in some versions, she actually needs extra chemicals or the kryptonite lipstick in the case of Superman in order to do the mind control. But in other versions, she naturally produces the pheromones. So I do feel that it does count. But even if you take this out of the equation and don't count her mind control powers, she still has more power than any other Batman's Rose Gallery member because Poison Ivy has an insane level of power. It's one that she rarely utilizes to be fair, but when you actually see her let loose for real, you see that she is essentially a god. I mean, it does make sense. After all, plant life does cover a very large portion of this planet, and she can control all of it. So she is insanely powerful. Not only is she the most powerful member of Batman's Rose Gallery, but she's also one of the most powerful people in the world of DC. Though with that being said, there is one other villain who I do think deserves a mention, at least in terms of power, and that is Firefly. Now, on his own, Firefly is pretty worthless. But in the show The Batman, he did receive a power-up and become Phosphorus, a villain who basically has the power of a nuclear reactor. Now, the full extent of his firepower isn't really shown, but it is insanely impressive, and he can give off very, very powerful amounts of radiation. I still don't think it's better than Poison Ivy's abilities, but it is worth mentioning. And in this show, Mr. Freeze is also pretty powerful as his freeze powers come from his body, not from weaponry. And he is insanely powerful, even being able to bring about an apocalyptic like winter in the future. So this does actually rival Poison Ivy's power in a way, but I still think Poison Ivy is more powerful, as there is a lot more uses for her plant powers. And of course the fact that she can not only create sentient life, but she's also managed to grow plants in the past that can cure illnesses and even give people superpowers so it's a much more useful ability than Mr. Freeze's freezing powers. Although with Mr. Freeze and Firefly, I do have to say that they're only one version of those characters, and that usually they aren't this powerful, whereas basically every other version of Poison Ivy is pretty much always insanely powerful. And I know that some of you out there may think that Grundy is Batman's strongest villain, and I haven't included him because I personally don't consider him to be a true member of Batman's rogues gallery. I know some of you might, but personally I don't think of him like that. And the problem with him is that even if I did count him, I couldn't really gauge his strength as it's varied so drastically over the years. In some versions he can actually be overpowered by Batman, in other versions he can give Superman a run for his money, and in other versions still he can actually defeat Superman quite easily. Though I think that's mainly because he's powered by magic, which of course Superman is susceptible to. But even if we did count him, I don't think that his strength is greater than that of Clayface's. After all, Clayface can just turn into Grundy, which did actually happen on the show The Batman. And that is Batman's most powerful villains. 
Rachel Gaul in terms of resources, Clayface in terms of brute physical strength, and Poison Ivy in terms of raw power. Do you agree with these choices? Or do you think that other members of Batman's rogues gallery are more powerful? Well, be sure to let us know in the comments, as I'd love to hear your choices. After all, this is all just my own personal opinion, and this is a discussion video, so your input would be much appreciated. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.